Let's get started. So let's see, I'm collecting uh, homework five today for the on-campus students. Uh, it's been, the off-campus have been doing very well, I think. We've had homeworks being returned every day this week. Um, so that's good to see. Keep up the good work. Um, <clears throat> and I guess uh, the uh, next assignment, homework six, is up on the website. Homework six deals with analysis of uh, transformer isolated converters. There's a forward converter problem, as we discussed last time. Uh, there's a flyback converter problem, which we're going to talk about today. Um, and for the graduate students, there's also a problem on a current sense transformer circuit. <coughs> uh, again, you know, the main problem or uh, issue with these is understanding how volt second balance works on the transformer windings um, and inserting the transformer model in with the ideal transformer and magnetizing inductance and then uh, modeling the converter using volt second balance and charge balance as usual. So you'll be deriving an equivalent circuit model with losses for a flyback converter. Uh, you'll be analyzing a forward converter with some conduction losses and synchronous rectifiers. And you'll be looking at how a current sense transformer works and how it's reset and the volt second balance works. Uh, anyone have any questions on the last homework or anything else? Okay, well, um, so I want to finish up the, uh, if I can, the uh, uh, transformer chapter or chapter six today. And uh, after that, we're going to start on uh, part two of the course and start talking about control systems for power converters next. Um, okay, so last time we talked about the forward converter, among other things. It's a uh, transformer isolated version of the buck converter and the one we discussed last time was the basic single transistor version that has a single transistor um, three windings on the transformer with this middle winding that performs the reset function or, of the transformer to get volt second balance and what we talked about last time was that the uh, magnetizing inductance of that converter must work in uh, discontinuous conduction mode and it uses discontinuous conduction mode to get the magnetizing current to go back to zero every switch before the end of every switching period. And when it does, the volt seconds will balance. Um, there's a two transistor version of the forward converter that's also very popular and is a good converter. And we have one slide about it, so here it is. This one is similar to the single transistor version that we talked about last time. Um, it has two transistors that are turned on at the same time. So you turn them both on for the D interval, <coughs> and uh, the transformer primary is then connected to VG. It has the same secondary as in the other, uh, other forward converters. But uh, when the transistors are turned off, what happens is that there are two diodes that turn on, and instead of having this extra winding in the middle of the transformer, what happens is that the magnetizing current which we can model as the current in this magnetizing inductance. But that, that magnetizing current will increase when the transistors conduct. And when you turn the transistors off, where does the magnetizing current go? Well, it if it goes through the transformer, it'll come out the dot of the primary and go into the dot of the secondary, and it won't happen because D3 won't let it. Instead, what happens is that the magnetizing current flows through these primary side diodes. So if we trace the path that it takes, it goes this way, goes through D1, VG, and then comes around there. Okay, so the positive magnetizing current at this point will forward bias D1 and D2.
And what they do then is they connect the primary winding of the transformer up backwards to VG so that the voltage applied across the magnetizing inductance now is minus VG and the current ramps down on the slope of minus VG over LM. Okay, so during the first interval we stored energy from VG in LM and increased the current IM up to some peak value. And then during the next interval we give the energy back to VG. So energy just keeps going back and forth between the two. Um, but in the process, we, we reset the core. When the current gets back to zero, then D1 and D2 will turn off. We're in, dis, in a discontinuous mode. And at that point, everything on the primary side is, is off. The only thing that keeps conducting is D4 conducts the output current for the remainder of the interval. What's the maximum duty cycle for this one? Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Thank you. <laughs> right. Uh, you. Uh, we reset the, the magnetizing inductance with the same voltage that we originally charged it up with. We apply plus VG here and minus VG there. And to get the current to ramp back down to zero, the off time, or this, this second interval, has to be the same length as the first. So the first interval can't consume more than half of the switching period. Otherwise, we won't fully res or get the magnetizing current back to zero before the end of the switching period. Another nice thing about these diodes is that they clamp the voltage across the MOSFETs. There's always this problem, like when you turn off a MOSFET in a transformer isolated converter, you interrupt the mag current and the, the leakage inductance of the transformer. And we, uh, you know, another mod uh, a more accurate model of a transformer includes not only this shunt magnetizing inductance, but also series leakage inductances, which we'll talk about. Um, later on in the semester. But effectively, there are small inductances in series with all the windings of the transformer that model the leakage of flux into the air that doesn't couple all the other windings. And that those leakage inductances um, get their energy build up as well. When current flows through the winding, energy is stored in those leakage inductances. When you turn off the MOSFET, you try to interrupt that energy and the voltage or the leakage inductance generates a large voltage when its current is attempted to be interrupted. The nice thing about these diodes is that they clamp the voltage across the FETs. So otherwise the voltage on the leakage inductances tends to um, cause voltage spikes across the FETs when you turn them off and um, can destroy the FET. There are circuits called snubber circuits to try to protect the FET, but they dissipate power. And a nice thing about this converter is that the voltage here on the FED is clamped so that this point can be no greater than VG. If it tries to go larger than VG, D1 will turn on and clamp the voltage to VG. Likewise, D2 clamps the voltage across Q1 as well to be no more than VG. So the transistors actually share the input voltage. They have to block no more than VG each. If this is 400 volts, then you can use a 400 volt plus some margin, maybe a 500 volt MOSFET. Um, and so this is a popular converter for you know, offline type power supplies. <coughs>